welcome everyone back to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be continuing our study of Isaiah or Yeshayahu in the Hebrew. We're up to chapter 14. Um, so please check out the previous recordings. Um, so let's get straight into it, family. Isaiah 14. For the Lord, Yahovah, will have mercy on Yaakov and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Yaakov. For Yahovah will have mercy on Yaakov, and will yet choose Yashrael, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Yaakov. Well, that's one of the most beautiful verses in scripture, friends. But we, we will perform a, a, a concise and yet, I hope, helpful uh, exposition uh, in a few minutes. But first, let's see if we can read the whole chapter. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahovah the Lord, the servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahovah the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Yahovah hath broken the staff of the wicked friends. Yahovah has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yet the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no fella is come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like thee most high. 
yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners, all the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the raiment of those that are slain thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, says Yahovah of armies, the Lord of hosts. I will rise up against them and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew says the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bitten with pools of waters, pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, says Yahovah of armies, the Lord of hosts. Yahovah Sevaot, the Lord of hosts, hath sworn saying, surely as I have thought, so shall it cometh to pass. Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. But I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. This is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For Yahovah of armies has purposed, the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back, friends? It's a wonderful verse. For Yahovah of armies hath purposed mankind, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice not thou, O Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery, flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed. And the needy shall lie down in safety. And I will kill thy root with famine. And he shall slay thy remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thy whole Palestina art dissolved. For there shall come forth from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times.
what shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? But the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his peoples shall trusteth in it. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That Yahovah hath founded Zion, and the poor of his peoples shall trust in it. The Venerable King James translation is the translation of choice today, friends. I'm often either in the New King James or the, uh, the wonderful Derby translation, but today we're in the uh, authorized version, the KJV. So let's begin, beloved Hirkinism. And thank you so much for tuning into today's broadcast. Um, Yahovah, this is one of my favorite verses in all of scripture, listeners. It is Isaiah 14:1. Um, for Yahovah will have mercy on Yaakov and will yet choose Yasharal. Now, and set them in their own land. Um, now, yes, loveth God. Yah, Cher, El, uh, Yasha. Yasha means upright. What Yah loves, what Yah cherishes. Yasha, Yah cherish. Yah loved man, ish is the Hebrew word for man, Yah cherish. Um, and God loves mankind so much that he gives only God son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, when it comes to etymology and Hebrew friends, I generally just stick to some simple, easy to remember ones for persons that I share with and work with rather than getting too complex. Um, for I also have found that as an English speaker to be helpful. Um, and when it comes to Yahovah, which in the English translation is rendered L-O-R-D, which in, in my understanding is loving, omnipotent, redeeming deity, that's the revelation I have. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using the word and, and title Lord. Uh, however, the reality is that it represents YHWH or YHVH in the Hebrew, which is Yahweh, Yahovah. Uh, and then around the 16th century in Europe, the letter J appeared on the earth. So Yahweh, Yahovah, Yahovah, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. There's nothing wrong with the word Jehovah either. Now, um, so that is why you will often hear me uh, explain that it is Yahovah that will have mercy. It is the Lord, the Lord Yahovah. Now, Yaakov uh, is, is, is the Hebrew pronunciation for Jacob, Yaakov. And um, it speaks of the first man. Uh, in scripture, you have the first man and the second man. You see, you have Adam, the first man, and Christ Jesus, the second man. You have King Saul, who speaks of the first man, and then you have King David that speaks of the second man. You have Jacob that speaks of the first man, and you have, uh, his name was changed by God to Israel, Yashuel. Uh, and then, of course, in the New Testament, you have the soul of Tarsus, a Pharisee, a religious Jew that was persecuting the Christians, had a remarkable conversion experience and saw the ascended lord jesus christ and heard from him and became the apostle paul and he's perhaps one of the greatest types of the old and the new the unregenerate and the regenerate um the natural and the spiritual so that's a great theme throughout scripture beloved listeners and here uh as you can see very often in the old testament you have the juxtaposition of jacob and israel so let me briefly explain that. Now, of course, they're the same man. Um, Isaac's sons were Jacob and Esau. Uh, Jacob was the son of choice, the son of promise. Um, and Esau was not. Um, and, of course, even the son of promise, Jacob, had to have his personal encounter with Elohai Yahweh, uh, And he wrestled with Elohayim. 
He wrestled with God. It's a unique uh, expression in scripture. And I believe you will find that, friends, off the top of my head in the middle of Genesis. Where he wrestles with God. Um, Yes, yeah, so in where are we? In 27 here, um, we have Rebecca speaking to Jacob. Yeah, so Isaac and Rebecca had Jacob and Esau as their two sons. And then when he got older, Yes, of course, you have Esau selling his inheritance for some food to Jacob. That's usually wonderful Bible gateway, friends. There we go. So let us see. Yes, the word wrestled appears thrice in scripture in Genesis, um, which is very interesting. Genesis 30, 32. Um, in Genesis 30, it is Rachel that says she had great wrestlings with her sister. She called his name Naphtali, which is very, very, very interesting. The first mention of the word wrestled in scripture. Um, in Genesis 32, friends, you will see the, uh, the historical account of Jacob wrestling with a man until the morning. So he was actually wrestling with a man during the night. Um, and this speaks of a human's walk with God and the ways of God in subduing and subjugating men into righteousness, holiness, loving kindness, faithfulness and truth. That is what is in view in Genesis 32. And of course, 3-2 is the triune operations of deity and the son of God. Um, and it's also 32-24. Um, so that's in order to produce the son of God in full expression um, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the congregation, which is you, beloved listeners. Now, um, we'll just turn quickly to Genesis 32. Uh, we will have to make it reasonably rapid because there's 32 verses in Isaiah 14 that we're in today. It's quite a fulsome chapter. Um, so please check out Genesis 32 yourselves in your own times more thoroughly, friends. Um, but I just wanted to bring us to this, um, the end of Genesis 32. Um, verse 24, Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him till the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day break. Of. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore, the children of Yashuel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. 
Now then, beloved listeners, it's a glorious, uh, unique account in Scripture, and it's Genesis 32, 24 to 32. Um, and one could probably talk for hours just on that passage, friends. So in summary, what I will say, the principal point is that Jacob means supplanter, which means a liar, basically, or it also means heel holder. So someone that would grab someone's heel, uh, it's an unusual expression, rather than stand on their own two feet and do the next right thing and keep on keeping on and endure and persevere and pursue holiness, righteousness and truth, would rather hold on to someone else's heel uh, and get something by osmosis, as it were. So Jacob would speak of mankind under the curse in time upon the earth in natural circumstance and natural reasoning. And Jacob had to do with Elohim Yahweh in pure sovereign grace. And we all ought to be in that place of prevailing persistent prayer, um, where through faith and trust, uh, through asking we receive and seeking we find and knocking, behold, the door is opened unto thee. Now, during the night, Jacob was wrestling with a man. This is an actual man Jacob was wrestling with, but this was a man who was God. Uh, so this is uh, 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 what we call a uh, uh, pre-incarnate Christ Jesus. Uh, there are many occasions in the Old Testament where the Lord Jesus Christ appears to men um, prior to his actual incarnation. We, we call these terms in theological circles uh, Christophanies. Christophanies, appearances of Christ prior to the, uh, the main incarnation 2,000 years ago in Yashirel. Now, Yaakov means liar or heel holder. Yasherel, Yacherel, Yasha, Yasha is the Hebrew word for upright. If something is upright, Yasha, Yasha, and El or Al is the Hebrew word for God. El, Eloah, Aloah, El, Elah, Allah, Eloah, Elohayayi, Elohayayim. El is the Specifically, it's the uh, it's God in the singular, El. Elohayayi is 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 the God of life, uh, and Elohayayim is the plurality of the Godhead in fullness. Um, but El is God in the singular. So Yah Cherel, it speaks of Adam. It speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it speaks of all God's purposes in and through Jesus Christ, and it speaks of upright man is principally what it means for, for the purpose of brevity. Now, so his name goes from supplanter or heel holder um, to upright God. And it has been said, friends, that until this event in Genesis 32, Jacob was straight on the outside, but crooked on the inside. And that is the case for every natural born human on the planet, friends. Uh, they may appear straight on the outside, but they're crooked on the inside. You only need to watch half a dozen children in a room, friends, and you won't have to wait long till one is oppressing another, uh, upsetting another. Well, that's because of the sinful nature, friends. That's the extent of devilry upon the earth, the works of demons uh, throughout mankind and their minds from the dawn of time to the present day, um, the sinful nature, the lower nature. Now, the light has shone in the darkness and the darkness has not understood it. And here, after his encounter with Elohim Yahweh incarnate, uh, Jacob uh, was straight on the inside, but crooked on the outside. So he walked with a limp from that day forward because he wrestled with Elohim Yahweh. Now then, friends. So <clears throat> I share that with you, friends, to give you some inkling as to this juxt juxtaposition between Jacob and Israel in the Old Testament, because they're the same man, you see, um, that is uh, Isaac and Rebekah's son, Jacob, you see. So when it says Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, that is mercy on mankind in general and will choose the Lord Jesus Christ and has chosen the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and his body, which is all of you, beloved listeners, the redeemed, you see. 
So when you understand a little bit of Hebrew, friends, it's very helpful because just understanding that tiny bit of Hebrew will give you a wealth and a treasure trove of glorious wisdom and knowledge in understanding many of the Psalms, for example, and, well, most of the Old Testament. You just can understand the natural and the spiritual, uh, the first and the second, the natural reasoning and the spiritual reasoning, you see. Now, of course, uh, Elohai Yehovah had mercy upon all mankind, bringing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God has chosen one man, the Christ God, to rule over all nations and all mortals. In fact, all mortals that don't go in the fire are his body, his bride, his wife. Never before in the history of the world has a bridegroom died upon the altar to have his bride physically, eternally. And never before has a bride died upon the altar, upon the cross, alongside her bridegroom. That first woman's womb became a tomb. And everyone ever born from that first woman was under the curse of sin and death. But the Lord Jesus' tomb became the womb of the morning. And Christ is the firstborn from among the dead, beloved listeners. The firstborn from among the dead. These are great titles, friends. Great things to understand all the divine titles, friends. You should make that one of your interests, beloved Hirkiners. I'm sure there are, I've, in fact, I have two or three natural books here on this different titles of Elohim Yahweh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, friends. You should make that one of your interests in life, friends, to have more understanding about divine titles. All divine titles are relevant. It's not by chance that Elohim Yahovah has given his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, all various wisdom, power, and dominical supremacy over all creation, described and exemplified in the various titles, uh, in providence and covenantial loving kindness. So this is one of those verses, friends, that one could speak on for hours and hours and hours. But I'm conscious that we, we have uh, over two and a half dozen verses in this one chapter to get through. So, so we will, if you have questions, friends, or comments, or want to add anything, please do uh, in the conversation below this, this broadcast. Yahovah will have mercy on Yaakov and will yet choose Yashirel and set them in their own land. Well, that's where we are now, friends. 1948, a nation born in a day. That's where we are right now. Strangers will be joined with them. Well, in that tiny democracy in the Middle East, Israel, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Arabs, of Mohammedans, live perfectly happy in Israel. Most remarkable. Most remarkable. And Israel is surrounded by Mohammedan countries. All right. Dozens and dozens and dozens of millions of Mohammedans live around Israel, but hundreds of thousands live very, very happily in Israel right now. They have freedom of expression, freedom to worship. Many strangers are joined with Israel right now. And of course, many countries don't like to say much about it publicly, but Israel has massive worldwide support uh, because of America, the Christianized nation and global policemen, naturally speaking, upon the earth. Now, Strangers will be joined to them. They shall cleave to the house of Yaakov. Yes, you see. So, so many nations know that in order to have America's blessing, they have to be at least on friendly terms with Israel, which is most ironic, friends. And I spoke oft about this in previous recordings. Now, the people shall take them, bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yehovah for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Well, that is what has been happening. Um, there's quite a bit of saber rattling goes on in the Middle East, friends. Iran's constantly threatening Israel. 
but Iran knows that uh, that power belongs to God, and they know that God has uh, empowered America to have the massive military to dominate the planet, naturally speaking. So the unregenerate minds of the Mohammedans in the area, though they may be angry and venomous in their speech, uh, they know that they are subjugated uh, largely. Um, and so do the Syrians, and so do the Egyptians, um, uh, and so do other nations of influence in the area, Jordan. Um, and Turkey is a very interesting nation. But anyway, now, um, let us see. Yes, you see, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, you see. So that's what is meant by that, you see, the nations have to be in agreement with Israel to some degree because they need, the nations desire the approbation of the USA. You see, it's an economic and geopolitical and obviously military powerhouse, you see. So that's what's very ironic in the dealings of Yahuwah el -Haim. Over all of the, he assuredly doeth. Now... So let us see, beloved. So this is, this as well, spiritually speaking, friends, speaks of God Almighty having mercy upon Christians in whom dwells Jesus Christ. And they will be established upon the earth in the millennial kingdom, which is a theme of Isaiah. It's in at least two of the previous chapters. Uh, and it's further on in, in the book of Isaiah, it's a constant theme. Isaiah is like the Bible in, well, I don't say miniature, but it's like a, the Bible in the Bible is Isaiah. It's got the same amount of chapters as, as the Bible. And if you study it closely, you'll see there's a demarcation between chapter 39, which is how many chapters there are in the Old Testament, and the following 27, which is as many as in the New Testament, 66 books in total. And it's telling you clearly that, that God will, you see, friends, listeners, there was a moment in your responsible histories where you were saved, born again, cleansed in the blood, filled with the Holy Spirit. There was a day in your time, friends, when you were saved. Today, you are being saved from the world, the flesh and the devil. So, so you were saved, you're being saved, but you will be saved. You will be saved, friends. This mortal must put on immortality. This corruptible must put on incorruptibility. You see? So that's the physical redemption of the physical body. Christ has gotten his bride, his wife. Christ has his wife, friends. You see? Christ has the pearl of great price, the treasure in the field. All mankind has been purchased. You are all creature possessions. Trophies of grace and objet de mercy. Now, so this is the promise to the Christians, you see, friends, that it's not just, well, I kind of hope everything will work out eventually and I'll go to heaven. The idea, friends, that human beings are going to spend their time in heaven forever is a deception and a delusion. It's a religious idea. It is not biblical. We have a thousand-year physical reign upon this very planet, friends, where every true Christian will be physically immortal. That is, that is Christianity. This is real Christianity, friends. Every true blood-washed Bible-believing Christian that loves, serves, obeys, and declares the Lord Jesus Christ will have physical immortality upon this very planet and then will seamlessly go on to the new planet that God has created. But this one will be utterly destroyed. Now, Luke chapter 10, Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. You have power, friends, over all the power of the devil. Friends, do not obey the world, the flesh, and the devil. Oh, but the news says this, and the government says this. Oh, what we're going to do? Friends, don't believe the governments. They have their agenda. 
don't believe the government's friends. And of course, listen to common sense guidance and no one's suggesting that anyone should be harming any of the government. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying you don't need to believe their narratives and deceptions, friends. Two of which are current or all oh, the hospitals are going to be swamped. I even read in the Daily Mail, which is a terrible mouthpiece for government narrative and wickedry, as is the BBC, uh, you know, a wicked organisation of oppression and fear mongering. You know, and oh, well, the hospitals are going to be flooded. The hospitals in Britain have never been as empty as they've been the last two years. Uh, I, I'm not joking that the hospitals have been truly empty compared to previous years for the last year and a half. It's a complete deception and delusion. Salute the NHS. Well, thankfully, the NHS, uh, in most instances, have never had it as easy as they have the last year or two since the so-called pandemic, the non-existent pandemic. There isn't a pandemic. If there was a pandemic, there'd be thousands of bodies in every town and city on the planet, friends. Check your history. Complete deception cherry-picked narratives told with a certain perspective in view, right? Don't believe them, right? The next thing, oh, well, you need another vaccination. Well, I've just had one. Oh, no, that's no good. It's big pharmaceutical com companies, friends. Politicians, the latest thing for them is to be in bed with big pharmaceutical companies and for years, uh, as in the banking industry. These current crop of politicians are the latest in wicked middle and upper class wretches, career politicians, right? That feather their own nest. They're the untouchables, right? They, they could see themselves as royalty. Uh, very wretched, friends. Very wretched. The last generation of politicians have overseen the complete ruin of almost all currencies on the planet, right? Complete ruin. Check it out. I'm just being brief. The quadrupling of what we should be paying for gas, electricity, petroleum, and diesel, right? We are paying four times what we should be in Britain and Europe for, for gasoline, right? That's just a few of the things, as well as the legalization and celebration of the slaying of innocent, innocent unborn children uh, in the womb, uh, as well as uh, totally unnecessary, massive animal experimentation in almost every country that's swept under the table, as well as the last year Britain exported, I believe it was over a billion pounds in military. There are no wars. Why would you want to sell a thousand million pounds worth of arms? Because they're wicked, friends. Very, very wicked. Right? Very, very wicked. Now, that is the reality upon Earth. Now, However, Yahovah, mankind, will give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear. We read two days ago, fear not their fear. And what they say, conspiracy, conspiracy, believe them not. There's no conspiracy upon God's throne, friends. There's no piracy in heaven. The piracy that transpired upon earth is almost at an end. We are now at the appointed time, beloved Hyrcanus. It is nearly time, friends. It is nearly time for a global resurrection of hundreds and hundreds of millions of God's children. They shall arise physically from their tombs. They shall be immediately clothed with immortality. There will be a global resurrection from underneath car parks, cafeterias, cinemas, all over the planet, friends, houses, they will physically come out of the ground. How many humans are in the ground? Many billions right now are in the ground. Billions and billions and billions. All the body of Christ will arise. The Lamb's wife will arise. And immediately clothed with immortality. And they will immediately ascend into the air with this current last generation. And so shall ye ever be with thine Lord friends, here can us beloved. Thou shalt ever be with thy Lord. And that, from one perspective, is that. Immortal bliss, immortal joy, immortal loving kindness.
providence and providential covenantal expression of the full divine nature throughout all creation. But first upon earth will be the seven year tribulation, friends, seven year tribulation where these wicked humans, these wicked governments will continue their oppressions of men. Present time, friends, not to get onto earthly mind of things too much, but the latest uh, and one of the greatest wickedries of the modern era is the so-called COVID passport. What a wicked thing, a totally fascist Nazi thing. Oh, well, you have to have this COVID passport, otherwise you can't go to the cinema or the pub. Well, why would anyone want to go to such places? Most cinemas are filthy places anyway. And why would you want to go to a, a legal dope house to see people getting inebriated? No, these places are often places of demons. Um, but anyway, uh, the, oh, well, you, you must have this. And, and it definitely is the foothills of what we read in Revelation, beloved Hirkinus, where they must have the mark of the beast to be able to buy and sell. And if they don't have the mark of the beast, they won't be allowed to buy and sell. And there's no question about it. All the technology is there. Indeed, my understanding is this so-called COVID passport is some contraption on a phone that you scan or show. Um, and of course, the technology has been around for decades now to implant a chip in anywhere on the body so you can unlock your front door, put your lights on, scan it at the shop. Um, so you don't need to carry a card. Uh, and of course, the irony is that, uh, that, that big business and big tech love these ideas, you see. Big business, bank, the money industry, the banking industry is very much in bed with the politicians, as is big tech, as is big pharmaceutical companies, very, very much in bed with the governments, you see, friends, and give them monies. They're very corrupt, you see, lots of bribes. Now, So they have the technology, now friends, to put a chip inside of you, whereby they will create, by default, a cashless society, which will save on a daily basis, many, many millions, dozens of millions of pounds every day for the money men. Keeping actual cash in circulation is very, very, very expensive, friends. So, so, so for a long time, the banking industry has wanted to do away with money. That's why there's been such a push for everyone to use plastic. Uh, that's why there's been such a push for these uh, contactless things. Ultimately, they want to, to get rid of the cards altogether and have a chip that you just scan, you see. Um, and what was the other thing? Yes, yeah, so the banking industry would instantly become richer to the tune of probably over 100 million every single day, purely by not needing the security uh, around the movement of cash. Think about it, friends. All your shops, all your banks, all this movement of actual cash is very, very, very expensive. The storage of all this cash, um, well, that would be largely done away with in one fell swoop if they, if they insisted everyone use plastic. And of course, the thing about using plastic is they know every purchase you make. You know, there'll be someone sat in most countries that could tell you every purchase the citizens make, you know, uh, and then now they have the capacity to track you wherever you are on your mobile phone and also the capacity to record everything within earshot of the mobile phone. So we very much live in a surveillance state. I myself 100% know that all my conversations listened to. Uh, which must be very interesting uh, when speaking in the word of God, <clears throat> one would think. Anyway, back to the story. So <clears throat> the COVID passport is one of the most wicked things in the modern era, alongside the teaching of little boys that they could be little girls and little girls, they could be little boys. A male is a male from the mom to birth and a female is a female from the mom to birth, period. Now, let's come back to the text, beloved Hyrcanus. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. They shall rule over their oppressors. Now, Yahovah will give you rest from your sorrow, from your fear and your hard bondage. 
wherein he was made to serve. Now, of course, that is speaking of uh, the slavery of the uh, Israelites and the Egyptians, but also mankind under bondage to self and to Satan, you see. You'll take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Now that in type is the devil, you see. How hath the oppressor ceased? Now, the golden city ceased. So that speaks of a cessation of the visibility and expression uh, of the nature and character of the devil. Um, in the millennial kingdom, uh, all the work of men and devils will come to nothing. It will all just be expression of sovereign nature, sovereign will. That's what happens. This whole planet just becomes a complete expression of Elohaya Yim Yawawah. One will be in full expression. One has all power, one has all wisdom, one has all knowledge, one has entire sovereign dominical rule over all creation, beloved Hirkins. One rules presently. Because, five, the number of grace, Yahuwah has broken the staff of the wicked. You see, so that's all the influences and works of the devil, the son of God, the language of the New Testament has destroyed and undone all the works of the devil. The Son of God is manifested to destroy all the works of the devil, friends. And the scepter of the rulers. Well, why does it say staff and scepter? Why does it say Yahweh has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers? Well, whenever you see trees or staffs and scepters, it speaks of the cross. Uh, and of course there was three crosses that day there was the cross of all those that are damned that are going in the fire there was the cross upon which the Lord Jesus Christ died and then there was the cross of the other three friends who in type is everyone that is going to be saved friends listeners you can't add anything to your salvation that's religion that's religion the only thing you can add to your salvation, friends, is the sin from which you need saving. Christianity is the salvation and mercy of God, the righteousness eternal, the power and gracious loving kindness eternal, in expression in mortals upon the earth in time, bringing glory and praise and thanksgiving to heaven, to the throne of God. Christianity is a work of God from A to Z. And salvation is from God. Stand still, mankind, and see the salvation of God, the Yeshua Elohayim. Now, why does it say the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers? Well, the staff of the wicked, wicked I would say, would a staff, you see, is something that a commoner would have. Whereas a scepter is something that a ruler would have. Um, now, the staff of the wicked, it would speak of community influence. It would speak of ground root, grassroots influence of the devil. It would speak of the sinful nature um, in every human being upon the earth. Well, that's finished through the blood atonement and the sufferings, the atoning work of Jesus Christ. You see, now the scepter of the rulers would be the influence uh, of the devils over human rulers uh, and their direct influence, principalities and powers, the prince of the power of the air who influences mortals to this present day. Yahovah, God, hath broken all the works of the devil, friends. Yeah, so the devil persecuted mankind in wrath with a continual stroke and he ruled the nations in anger. Well, he himself is now persecuted. He is doomed and deluded and vile uh, and is soon to go into the bottomless abyss for a thousand earth years. The foul air 
will be cleansed from off this earth, friends. The doomed, deluded, wicked one will be thrust into the bottomless abyss for a thousand earth years. And he has been being persecuted by the Lamb's wife, by the church, by the congregation for these 2,000 years. And there's the verse for it, Isaiah 14, verse 6, 6 being the number of man. It tells you that the devil that has smote mankind in wrath with a continual stroke and has ruled the nations in anger, he himself is persecuted and no one stops it, no one can stop it. So there's no counsel, purpose, nor understanding against Elohim Yahweh. Now, verse 7, completion, entirety, all sufficiency, sovereignty. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. And that in simplicity is everything, you see, friends. That verse tells you the completion of everything. Men and women, oh, what's going on? Oh, no, there's this, friends. This whole planet will be filled with glory and righteousness and holiness and honor, right? The curse will be abolished. Christ has already abolished death, curse, and the sin and the devil. Christ has already abolished all that, friends, right? Ye are all in time. Thy Christ God is in eternity upon the throne, having accomplished all things, right? Your majesty is already exalted, ruling over all of ye. Friends, ye are all in time at the present moment, but the Christ God is in eternity upon the throne of God. You see? Now, the joy of Christianity is that mortals partake of that which is eternal in time upon the earth. But we are now in the closing days of time. You see? I'm not even sure. From one perspective, the millennial kingdom is still in the time frame of time. But for the saints, the redeemed, once they are clothed with immortality, the former things will be remembered no more. There'll be no more sorrow or tears, sighing or sadness. No more influence of the devil for the redeemed. Oh, no. The former things will be remembered no more. Now. So, friends, sing in your hearts. Meditate upon the truth. Know the scripture. Memorize the word of God. Now we have trees. The fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fellow is come up against us. So this eight speaks of entire completion. Um, it's, it's a very, very interesting. Anyway, so this speaks, this has a twofold application, this verse. Some verses, not many in scripture, have a twofold application. You can see the Lord Jesus Christ in some verses, and there is some indication of what happens to the devil in them as well, you see. So since Christ was laid down in that tomb, friends, no fellow has been able to come up against you was said to Joshua, every piece of ground upon the, which the sole of thy foot treadeth has Yehovah the Lord given unto thee. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Right? The accuser of the brethren has been cast down forever, overcome by the blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, friends. The devil, the vile, devile, is utterly ruined and destroyed. His works are nothing. In Christ Jesus, he has nothing. The devil cannot come against you, mankind, when you have your saviour and your king taking pleasure in you as a crown of glory, a reason for rejoicing. Christ takes pleasure in his wife. You see? And so when you're agreeable to his majesty, friends, you have peace and joy and triumph. Praise be to God who always leads us in triumph of procession in Christ Jesus. 
Uh, so, the irony is that when Christ was laid in the tomb, the devil was destroyed. Sin was atoned for, mankind redeemed, eternal righteousness obtained, reconciliation, redemption, and wondrous blessings eternal for all mankind. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. You should read the epistle to the Philippians in the New Testament, friends, the epistle of rejoicing. Now, since thou art laid down, no fellow is come up against us. Ah, what a blessed thing. Christianity, friends, the greatest thing on the planet, apart from the Christ and the saints, of course. But what a beauteous thing. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Now, this is very much a unique verse in scripture. Um, similar ones would be um, Hell is before Jehovah. How much more? than the hearts and minds of the children of men. Um, on this rock, the rock of revelation knowledge, will I build my church, my congregation, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ even preached the good news in hell, in between the cross and the resurrection. Christ even preached to sinners that were in hell. You can read about that in First Peter, friends. Now, this again is another verse uh, that speaks uh, of the work of Jesus Christ in between the cross uh, and the empty tomb. Hell, and it also speaks in some way of the devil. Uh, hell from beneath is moved for thee, as you'll see in the coming verses. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. So you, you, you kind of have the twofold revelation, friends, in this, in this chapter. Um, you have the revelation of the finished work of Jesus Christ, uh, and you have deliverance and peace and joy and blessing eternal for all mankind that is in Christ Jesus. Um, and then, of course, you have the revelation of the devil, uh, which is very, very unique in Scripture, by the way. Um, there is a reference in Ezekiel, there's this one in Isaiah 14, and there are a couple of references in Revelation, uh, but not many elsewhere uh, about the revelation of the devil, as it were, so to speak. Um, so this verse here, beloved, here can us. is about full revelation, the, about the dead, about everyone that's ever walked the planet. Uh, there will be, of course, two resurrections. The resurrection of the just, which is rapidly approaching. Uh, this, this generation definitely sees the resurrection of the just. Um, and then, of course, there's a resurrection of the damned, which is at the end of the millennial kingdom. Um, So now we, we move into uh, the revelation of the devil, so to speak, um, to all mankind. That's what we're looking at in this passage now, chiefly. Um, the rulers, it says, the chief ones of the earth. So all men that have ever ruled over other men, friends. This is all kings, and presidents and emperors in China and Egypt and Africa and Britain and all over the world. Uh, everyone that's ever exercised rule and authority over mankind, they will see the devil. And then they will understand that many of their actions and words and behaviours um, honoured the devil more than honoured God. Um, <clears throat> so everything hidden will be revealed. Uh, whatever makes manifest is light. 
So this is very much a chapter about full revelation. Ultimately, every thought, word and deed of every human being that has ever walked this planet will be made fully manifest, friends. Everything. The hairs on your head are even numbered, friends. The books will be opened and the dead will stand before the throne of the Lord God. And they'll be judged according to the things written therein. What will your book say, beloved listeners? What will your book say, friends, of your days, of your speech and your words, your wickednesses? Where will you go, friends? Will you be thrust into the lake of fiery, sulfurious, brimstonian punishment? Or will eternal joy and eternal mercy and eternal nature find its denouement, its fulfillment in light and blessing and loving kindness, friends? Will the mercies and loving kindnesses of God Almighty be your portion forever? Well, friends, if you're enduring and enjoying these discourses in the book of Isaiah, very likely your names are in the glorious Lamb's book of life and life eternal is your portion through the atoning sufferings of Christ Jesus. So come, come, we're now going to read through these. Uh, we don't uh, give honor or glory to the devil on this channel, friends. It's just that this channel uh, is a channel for truth and righteousness and holiness and justice and the word of God brings light and life to all men. Um, so here we are, um, verse, so all mankind in verse nine will speak and say to the devil, are you become weak like we are? Are you become like us? Your pomp is brought down to the grain and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven? Or Lucifer, son of the morning. Now, I just want to say, friends, make something clear. Lucifer is not the name of the devil. Human beings have decided that that is a name of the devil. But the Bible does not give the devil the name Lucifer. Now, I know, friends, you've been brought up in the world with television programs and the Catholic Church. Uh, and uh, your cultural and societal influences, friends, and you you may be listening to me tell you, say, oh, no, that's definitely, no, no. Let me tell you, friends, Lucifer is not the name of the devil, right? Lucifer is a name that the King James translators decided to use for son of the morning, light bearer. It's a Latin word, right? God very carefully does not give the devil a name in scripture. You can search the scriptures, friends, test everything I tell you. The devil is not given a name in scripture. He's given a description, that ancient serpent, uh, the father of liars, uh, a murderer, a thief, a robber, the vile one, but he's not given a personal name. So I just want to make that clear. Um, that son of the morning, and we'll just... To show you this, friends, I'll go. I'll just take you quickly to the uh, highly accurate Derby translation. Well, you see, even, even Mr. Derby renders it that. Well, it's actually Son of the Morning, um, and it's a title, a light bearing Son of the. Well, Son of the Morning speaks speaks of that. So that's when the light cometh in the morning. So it speaks of one that had great power and influence, uh, a, a very powerful, mighty, wise and beauteous angel who has lost his immortality, lost his glory permanently. Um, that's who it speaks of. So we'll go back to the King James. <clears throat> and of course, you can read in Revelation about the war in heaven. In fact, I think we... We discussed that on a broadcast a couple of days ago, beloved listeners. How are you cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Now, this is the root of human pride. Um, the devil said, I will ascend into heaven and exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation. 
So that speaks of the devil's desire to rule over the church, the lamb's wife, the bride, uh, which thing he has tried to do for 2,000 years, which is why, friends, there, there has not been, as it were, a successful assembly, um, you know, as gathered publicly. I mean, if you look at all the different groups, you know, um, particularly the Catholic Church, I mean, that could never be successful because that was a, a mixture of natural physical dominion and spiritual dominion, temporal and spiritual dominion. That's the, the root of the Catholic Church. The Roman Emperor, you know, the Roman Empire thought it'd be a great idea to, to mold spirituality with temporal influence uh, and then to have complete control claiming physical rule and claiming gathering taxes and having actual geopolitical dominion um, and also spiritual rule. That's what the Catholic Church was and is. Uh, and even to the present day, the Catholic Church, when I say the Catholic Church, I mean the, the Vatican and the, the wicked popes, they've been exerting influence over countries for centuries and centuries and centuries. The great lumbering anti-Christian system the that I can destroy. Now, now you can read about that in Revelation, friends. The city surrounded by seven hills. So the devil has very much been involved in the influence of mankind through the so-called Catholic Church. And if you look at smaller groups, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the Congregationalists, the Lutherans. You look at all these different uh, organizations. Whenever men and money get involved, friends, it goes pear-shaped. That's the reality because of pride and arrogance and greed and lust for power and dominion. You see? And that's the issue. But if you, a student of scriptures will be able to tell you that Yahovah himself doth gather and shepherd and guide and heal his own people sovereignly. That is the mystery of the New Testament, friends, and the Old Testament. I, Jehovah, will guide you and teach you with mine eye. I, Jehovah, myself, will gather you and preserve you and heal you and guide you and give you life eternal. That is the message of the Bible, friends. Sovereignty. Entire dominical sovereignty. So therefore, fear not, beloved Hyrcanus, particularly in the midst of deep chapters of scripture like this, friends, fear not. King David said to look into weighty things is itself a weight. So the devil has lost his immortality, his right standing with God. Uh, he's lost everything. The devil is the loser very much. Um, and he is the deceiver and he is death. Uh, and he is the source of the delusion. Uh, and of course, he's responsible for the death and sor sorrow and suffering of every human being that's ever walked this planet, friends. Now, we read elsewhere in another scripture that, that uh, he's, he's deceived all the nations. And the essence of it is pride and self-exaltation. He said in his heart, he will ascend into heaven and exalt his throne above the stars of God. Uh, that's over the, the saints, the Christians, you see. He continually accuses and oppresses the Bible-believing Christians, friends. But you have a mighty protector, a mighty guardian, a great king. The king, his majesty, Jesus Christ, has all power, all knowledge, and all wisdom right now, beloved Hyrcanus. The seven-horned, seven-eyed Lamb of God. 
the kingdom of Elohai, Yahweh, is throughout this planet, friends. Fear not. Trust in thy King Jesus, friends. All is well. So the devil said, I will do this. I will do that. I'll exalt myself above God's throne. I'll sit upon the mount of the congregation. I'll ascend above the heights of the clouds. I'll be like El Elyon, the Most High. I will do this. I will do that. I will do this. I will go here. I will do that. Oh, no. All that's finished now, friends. All the influence of the devil and the influence of mortals is finished. This is the kingdom of Elohim, Yahweh. This earth belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, not to mortals and not to devils. That time is finished. The rule of men and the rule of devils is finished. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, devil, to the sides of the pit. Now, that's the bottomless abyss that you read about. Now, let me show you where that is, beloved listeners, in case there's any listeners that are not familiar with scripture. Well, there's a reference there in Luke. 8.31, the demons besought the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that he would not command them to go away into the bottomless pit. Um, let's go for abyss. That should give us... I thought it was. Yes, I thought it was. Well, there's the first mention in Revelation. Uh, there are eight references to abyss in the Bible. Romans 10, who shall descend into the abyss. Um, Roman Revelation 9, the key to the pit of the abyss. Revelation 9, the pit of the abyss. 9 11, 9 1 1, they have a king over them, the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew, Abaddon. He's Abaddon and Aronin. And in Greek, he has the name Apollyon. Um, but Revelation 20, verse 1, friends. I saw an angel descending from the heaven, having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the dragon, the drag, the dragon, the ancient serpent. He spent all his currency with God. He spent his life doing wickedness upon the earth. He's the spent one, the serpent, because he is pent with anger and fury at being evicted from eternity from the courts of the golden throne room of Elohaya Yin Yahweh. He's angry because he's lost his immortality. He's lost his beauty. He's lost his wisdom. He is deluded and doomed and vile. And he will burn eternally in the fiery lake of sulfurious brimstonian capital punishment, friends. And the smoke of his torment will ascend before me, night and day, forever and ever. Amen. Now, I saw an angel descending from the heaven, from the sky, having the key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand, friends. And he laid hold of the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devile and Shatan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the abyss, and shut it and sealed it over him, that he should not any more deceive the nations until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be loosed for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And the souls of those beheaded, on account of the testimony of Jesus, and on account of the word of God, the Logos of Theos, and those who had not done homage to the beast nor to his image, and had not received the mark upon their forehead and hand, 
and they lived and reigned with the Christ for a thousand years. And the rest of the dead did not live till the thousand years had been completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy he who has part in the first resurrection. Over these the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of the Christ, Theos and Christos. They shall reign with him a thousand years. So you can read the rest of the chapter yourself, friends. Uh, well, I shall read it for you, friends, well, since we started. <clears throat> now. And when the thousand years have been completed, Shatan, Satan, shall be loosed from his prison. He shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the war, whose number is as the sand of the sea. And they went upon the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of the sky, out of the heaven, and devoured them. And the deviled who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where are both the beast and the false prophet. And they shall be tormented day and night for the ages of ages. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat upon it, friends, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and place was not found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is that of life. And the dead were judged out of the things written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged each according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, even the lake of fire. If anyone was not found written in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that did shake the kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed the earth and slain its people the seed of evil doers shall never be renowned prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, says Yahovah of armies, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, says Yahovah. I will also make it a possession for the bitten and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction says Yahovah of armies. Now, friends, verse 19, when the devil is cast out of his grave, he's bound, you see, with a great chain and then cast in the bottomless abyss, <clears throat> as we've just read. But then at the end of a thousand years, he comes out of that grave, out of that bottomless abyss, like a zombie, and goes around deceiving mortals. And even after a thousand years of peace and serenity <clears throat> and life immortal in full expression, Humans are still deceived and deluded by Satan 
um, and they surround the good people, uh, as we've just read, and all the bad people are destroyed and cast into the lake of fire. <clears throat> because I will rise up against them, and I will cut off from Babylon the name and re remnant and son and nephew, says Yahuwah. Yahovah of armies has sworn, friends, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, mankind. As I have purposed, so shall it stand. This is the purpose that I will break the Assyrian upon my planet in my land. And I upon my mountains will tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them. So the yoke of the devil will depart from off you, mankind, completely. And the devil's burden will depart from off your shoulders, mankind. Never carry the devil's burden, friends. Are you angry listening to this? You're either angry at yourselves, angry at God, or angry at the devil, friends. Get clear. Be angry and do not sin. Be motivated, but do not sin with your words, thoughts, or behavior, friends. Be holy as I am holy. Possess your vessels in sanctification and honor. Possess ye your souls. The devil's yoke and burden will depart from off thine shoulders, Hyrcanus. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole planet. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. Because Yahovah of armies hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? His hand is stretched out. Who shall turn it back, friends? Tell me. Who? Nobody. That's who. No. <clears throat> now we come to the last few verses, beloved listeners. I know it's been a long broadcast today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is talking about Palestine, the Palestinians. Um, yes. So this was the end of the persecution of the Philistines um, for their wickedry by the, uh, the Jews. Uh, historically, um, and they were not to rejoice that the Jews lost their nationhood uh, because it didn't go well, particularly well for them. And it just goes to show that, um, you know, men are, are to be wise and discreet and modest as to uh, not taking pleasure in anyone else's downfall. Um, And the promise in verse 30, the firstborn of the poor shall feed and the needy shall lie down in safety. I will kill thy root with famine and slay your remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thy whole Palestina art dissolved. For there shall come forth from the north a smoke and none shall be alone in his appointed times. Yes, yeah, so this also speaks of the cessation of the nationhood of Yashirel, um, that was a future event for Isaiah at the time when he spake this, but it very much spake of the cessation of, na of, of the nation of Israel, which began with, with the Romans conquering it long before the birth of Christ and culminated in the Romans dissolving Israel as a nation ultimately around AD 70. Um, None shall be alone in his appointed times. No human being is alone, otherwise they'd be dead. The life in every human being is Elohayayi Yahuwah. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? Jehovah has founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. Jehovah has created this earth. And the poor of my people shall trust in what God has established. Whatsoever thing Yahovah doeth, beloved Hyrcanus, he doeth forever. 
well, thank you so much for tuning in, friends. And um, we'll be back with another uh, broadcast in the near future. Until next time, may the face of Elohayim Yahweh shine upon you and your families, give you peace, give you blessing, assurance, encouragement, and inspiration. Um, rejoice, listeners. And again, I say, rejoice. For great is thy king, the Holy One of Israel, in thy midst. Shalom, shalom.